What's up everybody, welcome back to PyBytes YouTube and today I want to show how to make a plot in the terminal using a package called PlotX. First of all, a special day. Today we hit 45,000 Pythonistas on our platform, a huge milestone and it's a nice coincidence because actually for the demo plot I wanted to plot the evolution of the growth of the platform over the last five or six years. Um, so yeah, we are really happy about this. But that aside, let's look at PlotX, the package. It's on PyPI, you can pip install it. You can do some really cool stuff. Um, maybe also good for a follow-up video uh, to do more advanced stuff. But for this, I'm just going to do a quick bar uh, diagram, something like this. Um, well, this is a histogram actually. Um, but yeah, what we basically wanna show is something similar to what we also discussed in the article. Uh, so here we did the trend of PyBets articles over the months. Uh, what I want to do in this video is the number of signups to the coding platform over the months. So I already have some starter code here. Uh, I already have done um, a data dump of the user table because the platform, as you might not know, is uh, written in Django. So you can use the dump data uh, command. By the way, we have a Django video about that, how to uh, import and export data from Django. You can see here. Um, and we dump the user table to a users.json output format JSON, right? So I have two functions. Um, one is going to aggregate the users by month or by year month rather. And the other is going to show the plot, right? So, um, and then this if name equals main means if we run the script directly, then we call one function that returns the data and then we show the plot passing in that data. We also have a video about if name equals main, uh, it's explained here, but let's uh, get going. So first we need to open the file name passed in And then we need indeed a json.load of the file handle, and that gives us a list of data. Let's actually see what that gives us. Um, here I'm at the breakpoint, and the type here is a list, and the first element is a dictionary, right? Because json typically is a list of dictionaries. And not to reveal too much user data, I'm just going to use that. No. Oh. I'm going to look at the keys and we have model, PK and fields. And we actually want to look at the fields. And then again, I'm a bit cautious with showing the data because it's real platform data. Um, what we are interested in is the date joint daytime column. So I can get that like this. And here we get a timestamp. Uh, we could make it a daytime, but on the other hand, if I just slice off the first seven characters, we get um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We actually get the year, month, and this is the exact format I want to have that in. Right, so this is on every row what I need to do to get the year dash month where the year is four digits and the month is two digits. And that's also how I usually write code. I just do a breakpoint in there and from the PDB prompt, I experiment and then I copy it back, right? Um, well, that, that's to get a single year date and then we want to have a counter object, which I also imported here to start counting the instances, right? So we will have a dictionary where the Keys are the year months and the values are the counts. And for that, of course, a counter is ideal from the collections module. Um, so here, for row in data, year month would be this. And then we need to add it to the counter just by increasing the count. And similar to default dict in the sense that you don't have to initialize a new key with the value zero. You can just assume that the key is already there and the inner mechanics of counter, uh, same as default dict, take care of that. And then we return that dictionary. So maybe to look at the um, 
intermediate result, we can now use a breakpoint here. And I get a key error because I was doing this for a single item, but now I'm looping through all the items. So at this point, the row is the dictionary. All right, that worked. If I do a PP data, uh, PP is um, PDB or debugger command. If you want to do that in Python, you can also use from pprint import pprint, which are then usually alias to pp. And then you get the same result. So we get, as I said before, the keys are the year months and the values are the counts. And the counter works that it's also ordered um, descending with the highest values first. But actually, that's what we don't want for plotting. For plotting, we actually want to have keys in, in order because we want to show a synchronous timeline. So for the plotting, I can actually use what we did in the article. So I'm going to copy this function and replace this stub. And so what we do here is we get the data in, that's a dictionary. I could of course use uh, type hints, but I want to, um, so it would be something like string int because the key is the uh, year month and the Values the int, but let's um, focus on the plotting for now. Uh, so here is a little trick to extract um, dictionary into l keys and values. So I call these labels because these effectively are. So if you have a dictionary like a one b two, now labels ends up being a and b. and values ends up one and two, right? So we put the keys all together and we put the values all together. So that's what's happening on this line. And then we can um, use the PLT, which um, is just an alias at the import level of plotext. And we can use the bar method, which requires labels and values. I guess it would have more stuff you can pass in if it auto completes. Yeah, so we can also give it color, width, orientation, all that, but I'm keeping this simple and default for now. And we can give it a title, but that's of course not articles, but that's uh, PyBytes platform user signups per month, I guess. Yeah. And then you do PLT show, and then it should show the plot in the terminal. Right, so maybe run black as well for the formatting. That was all okay. And I still have my breakpoint somewhere, so I need to delete that. And there you go. Um, here you see the trend. So we started the plan for end of 2017. So that has been five years and eight months. So that's really cool. And then it's pretty constant. But then um, towards the end of, or somewhere in 2019, there was a big peak of a month of 9,400 accounts. And that was the Humble Bundle. <laughs> And you see another spike uh, in 2020, which was a humble bundle and a lower spike, but a spike nonetheless in mid 2022. And that was another humble bundle. So it's kind of cool to see like, what are those outliers? And they have clear explanations. Um, the humble bundles were exactly around those time frames. Um, for the rest, it's pretty uh, constant with a little variation over the months, but you can clearly see that those um, promotions we uh, took part in um, had thousands and thousands of people sign up to the platform. So that's pretty cool. So thank you, Humble Bundle as well, and everybody that uh, that signed up through that. Right, so this is pretty cool, right? Like normally we are used to plots in uh, desktop applications or web applications, but you can have those plots in the terminal as well, as you see here, and the code is actually pretty limited. You just need to prepare your data, which is what we did here. And then, um, yeah, split it into labels and values, and then you can make a bar chart. And of course, there are other things you can do as well. Histogram, scatter, etc. But here I just go for a simple bar chart. So yeah, check it out. Uh, again, we have an article here um, with another example, pretty similar, uh, but also just look at the, um, the PyPI package or if you click homepage, you go to the GitHub repo um, 
and yeah it's pretty cool so uh, give it a try and i really like it to make quick plots in the terminal hope this video is helpful thanks for watching and uh, see you in the next video